Hello Grade 12s and welcome to the Answer Series Life Sciences videos based on our study guides. In this video we look at two concepts, natural selection versus artificial selection. We'll focus on each concept separately, study some examples and finally compare similarities and differences. Firstly we'll refresh what we know of this topic from previous videos. Natural selection is where nature selects favorable traits. Each environment determines which organisms live and which organisms die. The environment selects those with favorable traits, the better adapted individuals, to survive. Favorable traits in one environment are not necessarily favorable traits in another environment, so it is the environment that is the selection pressure in natural selection. Artificial selection, on the other hand, is where humans select desirable traits. Farmers and breeders deliberately select individuals with favorable or desirable traits for breeding or cultivation. So in this case, it's humans that are the selection pressure that determine which individuals are selected. Back to natural selection. Another flashback from the video on Darwin's four observations. His observations were Number one, there are always more offspring produced than will survive. Number two, there's variation in a population. Number three, some individuals are better adapted than others. They survive, they reproduce. Number four, they pass on their favorable characteristics to their offspring. These observations led to Darwin proposing a mechanism of evolution and that is known as natural selection. Another very quick look back at a slide from the Darwin video there's a large number of offspring. There's variation in the offspring. Favorable characteristics give them an advantage. There's a change in the environment, in this case increased predation, which will lead to increased competition and better adapted individuals will survive. Individuals with unfavorable characteristics will die. Better adapted individuals will survive, reproduce and pass on the gene for the favorable characteristic to their offspring. The favorable characteristic becomes more frequent in the next generations and changes in the population may result in speciation. So natural selection is where the less fit die out and the better adapted individuals survive. Survival of the fittest. Natural selection is the mechanism of Darwin's evolution when nature selects the fittest individuals for survival. Individuals with favorable characteristics that are best adapted, they are the ones that survive, they pass on their genes to the next generation. Individuals with unfavorable characteristics, not adapted, they die out. So selection is in populations and not in individuals. This clownfish is adapted to living in between the stinging tentacles of a sea anemone. It has a protective mucus layer and camouflage. This one doesn't. It won't make it. The Arctic hare is adapted to living in freezing conditions. Small body, small ears, long hair to limit heat loss and a white coat to blend in with the snow. This hare, on the other hand, is adapted for warmer climates with a bigger body, huge ears to increase heat loss. It won't survive here. A mongoose that is oversized cannot escape its predators by ducking into its burrow. It won't fit. It won't be selected, it won't pass on its genes. The crocodile, an efficient predator, camouflages itself as a log to catch prey. This one? No, it won't be selected. Another example of favorable or beneficial or advantageous traits, air bladders in seaweed or in kelp keep them floating on the surface so that the leaves can absorb as much sunlight as possible for photosynthesis. A kingfisher with a body perfect for catching fish, including a straight, sharp beak. If a kingfisher had this beak, it won't catch any fish. It won't survive. It won't be selected. Other favorable traits may include courtship rituals. A frog must have the pitch-perfect frog song for his species to attract mates. If not, no mates, his genes will die out. Or the exact flashing light signals by the firefly to indicate availability for mating for its particular species. Natural selection is proposed as the mechanism for the existence of every successful characteristic in all species. 
What conditions are required for the process of natural selection? These statements should sound very familiar by now. More offspring are produced than can survive. There's variation in population. Characteristics are heritable. In other words, they can be inherited by the offspring. Changes occur in the environment. Selection pressures are all the environmental factors that determine which individuals will survive and which individuals will not. Selection pressures are environmental factors. They are factors that exert pressure on the population. They determine which individuals will live or die. Examples of selection pressure include competition for food or water or space, mating partners, light or oxygen. Predation is a selection pressure. Changes in temperature, whether it's too hot or too cold, can put pressure on a population. Diseases or parasites can affect a population. So the selection pressures are environmental factors that drive natural selection by exerting pressure on the population, whether it's disease or food, temperature, oxygen, space. The number of individuals that survive depend on their characteristics, whether they're favorable or not. In other words, their phenotypes. Whether the characteristics are favorable, where many of them survive, or whether they are unfavorable where very few survive. This graph shows predation as a selection pressure, where predators prey on the darker forms of these crabs as well as the lighter forms, but not the intermediate forms. They survive, the predators select which forms survive and which forms don't. Artificial selection, in contrast, is where humans act as the selection pressure. They determine which individuals are selected and which are not. It is also known as selective breeding or unnatural selection. It is the deliberate breeding of organisms to achieve desirable characteristics. These traits are desirable to humans, but they don't necessarily benefit the offspring, the organisms. Humans act as the environmental trigger or the selection pressure and deliberately select individuals to produce superior quality, whether it is wheat or fruit or more milk, more wool, speed. Farmers and breeders select superior trays and deliberately breed with these individuals with the desired trays. This process is repeated over and over until all the offspring have the desired characteristic. For example, Nguni cattle have been selectively bred for beef over centuries in South Africa as they're well adapted to harsh environmental conditions. Goldfish are selected from earlier forms to rather unusual combinations as selected by breeders. Note that genetic modification is a distinctive process. It always involves direct manipulation of genes to produce the desired characteristics, whereas artificial selection involves deliberate breeding of superior individuals. We'll summarize the similarities at the end of this video, but in the meantime, both processes involve variation. The variation is hereditary, in other words, it's in the DNA, it's in the genes. Populations change over time, and this change occurs over different generations. We'll summarize the differences at the end of the video as well. The main distinction between these two processes is where humans select the trays in artificial selection for their own benefit over short periods of time and this decreases biodiversity. Or a particular environment selects the characteristics in natural selection in natural populations for the organism's benefit. This happens over long periods of time and it increases biodiversity. Different dog breeds are a common example of artificial selection. They originate from a common ancestor, the wolf. Each breed was developed by breeders selecting particular individuals with desirable characteristics over many generations to achieve a particular look that is unique to each breed or pedigree. 
Examples of artificial selection in the cultivation of plants is illustrated where plants with desirable characteristics are crossed to produce new crops with improved characteristics that are beneficial to farmers or consumers. For example, carrots were selectively cultivated from the wild root to the orange, tastier, bigger carrots that we know today. Corn was selected and cultivated from the original smaller wild forms to produce the bigger cobs with many kernels. Bananas originally had seeds, less flesh and less taste. So improvements in plant crops include selection for taste, for fewer seeds, resistance to disease or pests or frosts or droughts, optimum size for harvesting or packaging or cultivating, foster ripening, etc. A well-known example shows various crops descending from one common ancestor, the wild mustard. It was deliberately cultivated to accentuate different characteristics, like selecting the stems for turnips, or selecting lateral buds, Brussels sprouts, selecting terminal buds, cabbages, selecting for flowers, cauliflowers, selecting for stems and flowers, broccoli, for leaves, kale or curled cabbage. The concepts of inbreeding and outbreeding are often associated with this topic, so we'll clarify the difference between them very briefly. Inbreeding in artificial selection involves breeding closely related individuals to maintain desirable characteristics like droopy ears. The offspring often have weaknesses or loss of vigor, loss of strength, loss of fitness. Or, on the other hand, outbreeding and artificial selection involves breeding between unrelated individuals, each with different desirable characteristics, to create new improved combinations or new traits. The offspring show hybrid vigor, which means a mixture breed with better fitness or strength. The Dorper sheep is a South African success story. It's a cross between a Dorset horn and a black-haired Persian. The Dorper is an easy breeder that thrives in our harsh conditions. Inbreeding and outbreeding can also occur in natural selection. For example, cheetahs are an example of inbreeding as they are all very closely related and they have many genetic weaknesses. Let's compare these two processes. The differences include environmental selection pressure versus humans. Selected traits are an advantage for survival, not an advantage. Selected trait is beneficial to the organism, beneficial to humans. It's a slow process, it's a rapid process. It allows inheritance of beneficial traits, allows inheritance of selected traits. It occurs within one species. It involves one or more species. It increases variation or biodiversity, decreases variation or biodiversity. It occurs in natural populations, domesticated populations. The similarities between these two processes include variation occurring in the population. The variation is hereditary, populations change over time, and these changes occur over generations. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from The Answer Series, your key to exam success.